Hey, y'all. Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your girl, A. So today, you know what time it is. It's Real Talk Diva time, you guys. What's up? I hope y'all are having like a really great day when you're watching this video. It's your girl, A. We didn't come to slay, but we do have two cornrows today, okay? Girl, look, today is Friday, and it's Friday, and here I am home. Um, Now listen, I got a little story to tell y'all. Please don't be disappointed in me because I was disappointed in my own self already. So yeah, girl, okay? Let's just get into this. Y'all know about Real Talk. So, girl, we're just going to get into this real quick. I'm going to share some things with you. And I was kind of like disappointed with myself. First, I was proud of myself. And then I started feeling disappointed with myself because it's like, hey, April, you know better. You can do better. Stop feeling like that about yourself. So, for one, today's Friday and I'm actually not at work. Okay. The reason why I'm not at work is because I quit. Girl, I quit. Yes, I quit. And I was kind of like disappointed in myself um, after a while, like after working the job for like a week and two days, I was, I was disappointed within myself. So, for one, this is what I feel. You really do need to know your worth as a person. And that was the first job that I had applied to. I applied to. Okay. Let's keep that in mind. I haven't worked for anyone where I got a clock in. I got a time card. I got a sign in. I, I haven't had to work for anybody like that for over like nine years. So I've been working for myself. You know, some people might not think like, doing social media is not a job, but it is a job because I'm here at this computer at this desk on a daily, okay, Monday through Sunday. I'm here seven days a week and I'm either editing, I'm either recording, I'm getting paid, I'm cashing my checks, I'm working and I also have my own website. So yes, I'm working. So with that being said, I did want a job to where the money that I stacked and saved all these years, I could just continue to keep stacking upon that because you know we all get old and after a while we're not going to be able to work so yeah i wanted to keep stacking plus i had that money and plus i have you know when you get old you retire you got your little 401k plans you got your social security whatever you know you just want to keep stacking money so that was my main goal was to keep stacking money and just add on to it and not have to use the money that i have been saving and been working for to pay any type of bills so the job that i did go out and apply for i wanted to use it to pay my bills and my bills only now like i said i have not applied for any job for the man working for the man or the woman in years so when i applied for this job on a friday and they called me that following monday for an interview and stated how impressed they was with my resume and it set me up with a job interview on that following tuesday and then that very next friday that very following friday hired me for the job i was stoked i was happy i was excited you know what i'm saying and i felt like well i do i am really worth something my skills are still are still really worth something and i was proud of myself i was happy with myself i liked to hear the fact that you was impressed with my my resume and I didn't even include all my other jobs but I included what was necessary for this particular job okay so when I went to this particular job now mind you I knew about the hiring process due to the fact that my daughter Nay Janae works there she works there she works from home as one of the schedulers for the doctors for the patients for pharmaceuticals she stays at home and works from home granted she did used to work in the office okay but they allowed her and other people to come home and work so I was really excited about that opportunity now let's get into the rest of this so I did go to the interview I I went and I got hired. I went to the orientation. I was excited because this was like, wow. I was excited and then I was nervous. But I was excited more so because I was like, yeah, I, I got hired just like that. The first job that I applied for. And I applied for other jobs too. And I did get hired from another job that was making a little bit more, but I really wasn't feeling the hours, you know, and I really didn't want to work for a debt collection agency. So as we were in the orientation, I'm not sure if you guys remember, but a while ago I had stated in a video and the video was called I haven't slept in like four years because due to my hormones, I was going to this doctor's health facility every three months or every two months complaining to the same doctor for over a year that I haven't gotten any sleep barely. I probably sleep like two to three hours a night. I'm not tired, but I don't feel like that that's good for my body. I will wake up. I have hot light flashes all night long. So I really wasn't getting that much sleep. She wasn't doing anything for me. She wasn't, she was just having me get my blood drawn every three months. Oh, well, let's try this. Let's try this. Let's get your blood drawn again. You really wasn't doing anything for me. Not only that, but you prescribed some high blood pressure pills. I still was having high blood pressure, still was having high blood pressure. So I finally got fed up and I woke up one morning and walked into the facility and complained and complained about the treatment. I got a new doctor. I got a doctor, doctor, not a practitioner, nurse, but a doctor this time who cared for me, made sure she gave me a nice regimen. She also gave me a prescription to help me sleep. She also made sure that my legs were okay because, you know, I do suffer from serious, um, serious CBI, which is chronic venous insufficiency. So it's sometimes it'd be painful for me to walk and I have to go for treatments. She made sure that all these things were taken care of. Okay. Unfortunately, that doctor left the facility. Now I'm there stuck and I have another nurse practitioner. I finally decided I'm not going to deal with this anymore. 
Not only did I leave the facility, but my other two daughters left the facility and we all go to a different private doctor's nurse, I mean, practitioner's um, office. Now, here we go. As I'm in the um, orientation, you know, this particular orientation is for the health facility that I used to attend. They sit in there, they talk about how much they love their patients, how good they do work, how just they just they just beefing up, you know, the actual facility in itself. I'm sitting there, I'm like, y'all know y'all damn lie. Y'all damn lie. But I'm not really going to speak out on it. I started feeling really, really down about myself when it started coming to the training and I started asking questions and I started realizing that these phone calls that you're getting and receiving are nonstop. When I say nonstop, they're nonstop, eight hours a day, your shift. And they're nonstop because they either let people go or people have left. So they really don't have a lot of reps to help. Now, it's one thing to talk on the phone. I'm not really a phone person. I don't really like to be on the phone, chit-chatting for too long. Give me like 25, 20 minutes and I'm good. But for eight hours and for only $17 an hour, Hour, y'all got me messed up. Now, this is when I started feeling down about myself. I knew the pay rate and I was acceptable to that. And then when I went to Mumsy's ceremony on Tuesday at her school for students with the highest GPA scores, and she was one of those for the past three years, I said, April, you can do better. Stop knocking yourself and stop doubting yourself. So my problem was this. The reason why I took the job is because I just felt like my skills were not worthy anymore. And with that being said, or what that be meaning is, I just felt like because I wasn't in like an actual work environment setting with clocking in and so forth, like a company, a brand, I just felt like my working skills were not that great anymore. And who am I to um, request higher pay? Or who am I to request a better position? April, you got to take what you can take and just be happy that they hired you. And this is how I really felt about myself until I realized after watching my daughter accept her certificate that you are worthy. You got to think of yourself better than that. Why would you sit at a job that you really are kind of like wishy-washy about for only $17 an hour? Now, I'm not knocking anybody that makes $17 an hour because that's on you. But this is me. I'm thinking for myself and I'm thinking like, you know what? I could do better. I don't need to put myself down. You have to know your worth. And 12 years ago, now this was 12 years ago when I used to work for Fidelis Medicaid, I made $27.48 an hour. Okay. Granted, that was 12 years ago. So you would think 12 years later that my income is going to be a lot better from another employer. I just can't be out here accepting any old thing. I was proud of myself for getting a job, but then I started feeling down about things like you can do better. I have to feel like I can do better. I have to think better of myself. And sometimes I'm not sure about everybody else, but I know me as a person. Sometimes I get in this rut where I really don't think too highly of myself. And it's okay because as long as I can get myself out of that rut and I can think more positive about myself, then I know that I'm going to be all right. I was really disappointed within myself for accepting the offer because I knew I could do better. And I also knew that I need to think better of myself as a person. So I did quit the job. I did text the person who hired me a nice message, letting them know that I thanked them for the opportunity, but it wasn't for me. This is my bad, you know, so they have several health facilities, several, about nine of them. And to only want to pay people $17 an hour to talk on the phone nonstop for eight hours is a disgrace. People deserve more than that. And I just watched my daughter on that stage and I felt like, yo, you helped her get here. You're a parent. You made sure she did what she needed to do. Not just you, but she as well. And why would you not think of yourself as worthy? So it is what it is. I left and they get their badge back, okay? They will get their badge back. But I just wanted to share that with you guys. You know what I'm saying? So it is what it is. But other than that, we're going to get into this real talk real quick. You know what I'm saying? Um, I did end up going to my new doctor's yesterday. That was my second visit because, like I said, I did leave the health facility. And I ventured out and got a new doctor, which is two minutes away. Like, literally two minutes away. And she's so caring and just so personable. You can tell that they really care. It's a family that owns this family practice. And she was not really happy about the fact that I came into office and my blood pressure just kept rising and rising like every 10 minutes. The medication that I was prescribed for my blood pressure from the first health facility was not working for me. It never worked for me, she stated, because she got my medical records from them. And I always had high blood pressure, but nobody seemed to care. She also seen my veins and the, the new place that I was sent to. She didn't really like the work that they were doing. So now I'm going somewhere else. So it's good when you can find somebody that really care about you, really, really care about you. So I had a great visit yesterday that will be going back on the 12th because I have to get like some type of heart monitoring um, for my arms and my legs to see how my blood flow is to my heart. And that's the problem that I'm having. It's kind of hard for me to sit down for too long. It's kind of hard for me to stand for too long. So I need to kind of sleep, be moving or sitting. You know what I'm saying? So the job really wasn't for me. And it wasn't really the pay that I was accepting, but I did accept it. And then I, you know, 
I snap back into reality. But neither here nor there. I just wanted to share that with you guys. Um, I was kind of disappointed with myself or not feeling worthy, like knowing my worth. And then I kind of got disappointed when I decided to quit because I've never quit anything before. Um, I guess it has a lot to do with, you know, I was a single mother, had to make sure my funds were straight. And now that I've worked so hard on my own and I've established good income and good savings, I can't see myself going backwards. You know what I'm saying? I had to realize you don't feel disappointed because you quit that job. So, you know, I had to disassociate myself with that position. Um, and it is what it is. What do my eyebrows look like off? Is it just me? Or I don't know. I don't know. I don't feel like my eyebrow game has been on kind of like lately. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but Girl, listen, I'm a chill today. I am going to bring my daughter to her dermatologist appointment. Um, as y'all see, my hair is growing back after that short haircut. I needed to get fuller though. I needed to get a lot fuller, but it is growing back. I'm not really sure if my edges are ever going to grow back in due to, you know, having CVI, chronic venous insufficiency. My blood flow is, is off. So I'm constantly, constantly like, you know, having to go in for treatments and because my blood flow is not like it's supposed to be my hair is thinning and that is like some of the side effects i don't know if my edges are ever going to grow back and grow i'm asking for a miracle but let's get into this real talk real quick okay y'all let's do it already know what to do if you want a real talk about you go ahead and send me an email to muffin is my lovers 2012 at gmail.com you should put in the subject line real talk so i know that it is real talk and if you want to use my other official real talk email it is april's real talk at gmail.com same thing put in the subject line real talk even though that is my real talk email sometimes you know it might go into spam depending on what your email address is and i could just search it but anyway let's get into this okay so here goes the email so it says in subject line, real talk, it's not that serious. Okay. Hey, April, divas and devos, Loretta here. And thank you in advance for reading my email. Hi, April, how do you deal with family? I mean, blood-related family members. I don't bother with a lot of my family due to their immature behavior. I have one sibling, which is a sister for my mom and dad. My mother and father have been divorced since I was about 11 years old. My sister, Aubrey, is younger than me by six years. So I'm 36 and she is 30. When my parents divorced, I went to live with my father because that's where I wanted to be due to my mother and I not getting along. My mother was a drunk and that was the reason for the divorce and she was ver verbally abusive towards me. So being that my sister Aubrey lived with my mom, I really didn't see her as much as me and my father moved down south with his family members until he got on his feet. He bought us a small house and raised me well from there. My sister was raised well also by my mother and her family members. My mother finally decided to stop drinking a couple of years after the divorce and got her shit together. However, she and I still was not on great terms as she has never spoke about her abusive ways towards me. Now it's 2024, April, and my sister and me, we don't speak to one another. My mother is always putting shit in her head like, come on, what can you really tell her about me? Because I moved with my father when I was 12 years old old. I attended a recent family barbecue reunion, which was indoors. It was nice. We all met up in Atlanta and had a great time until the second day, which was the last day. It was a weekend event thing. One of my mother's sisters came up to me and started in on me saying how, how I should be ashamed of myself for not speaking to my sister. And that is the reason why my sister did not attend the reunion, but my mom was there. So I realized this is what my mother told my aunt. And I in return, said to my aunt, no disrespect to you, Aunt Marie, but this has nothing to do with you or anyone else for that matter. My aunt, of course, is an older woman, but why did she put her fingers in my face and start cussing me out? Drunk, cussing me out to the point I had to remove myself and my two children from the situation. April days later, my mother called and went off on me and said, I am disrespectful. Never speak to her family like that. Never speak to her 
or my sister again. I don't know how I feel about all of this. I tried to explain to her that Aunt Marie approached me and how she and how she approached me. My mother only replied with, oh, well, respect your elder and don't come to any family functions unless you can learn to speak with your sister and apologize to her again. My sister and I don't speak because she feels as if I was wrong for leaving and not sticking by our mother's side. She stopped speaking to me about two years ago. So I know my mother has put stuff in her head because we would speak off and on prior to this as I was as we were growing up. I don't know what to do. What do you suggest? Someone please help and please give advice. My thought is to leave it be. I am not sure if that is the right thing to do. My mom will send me text messages every now and then asking me did I apologize to my sister Aubrey. But when I reply to my mom, why? Why am I going to apologize to her? She just says, what does it matter? Just apologize. Please help as I try to teach my children to be a family. And am I wrong for not apologizing? Apologizing. Lots of love, Loretta. Thank you. Okay, I have to give me a little sippy sip of some water here. Now, let's see here. We got Loretta, who's 36, and she got her 30-year-old sister, Aubrey, and she and her don't speak to each other. Now, this all occurred because she feels as if, Loretta feels as if her mom, their mom, has put stuff in Aubrey's head due to, you know, Aubrey living with the mom after the divorce and Loretta going to live with the father down south. <sighs> so she also did say that um, they did speak up until two years ago, her and her sister. So she does feel like it is her mom putting things in her sister's head because her sister feels like she wasn't on her mother's side. I guess she felt like she abandoned them and went to live with the dad. Now, here's one thing. Don't nobody want to be around no drunk parent, okay? I don't know about y'all, but I do not want to be around nobody who's drunk. They being verbally abusive to me. Y'all already know I had a situation somewhat like that when I had a, a, a drunk husband. That shit is irritating, okay? And as an adult, I'm not about to be putting up with that shit. Like, if you want to drink, that's your business. Stay over there with that bullshit. But when people get drunk, sometimes they send, they tend to just run their mouths, talk shit, feel like they Hercules. And then it's like, you know what? You either going to leave me alone or I'm going to have to go upside your head. And I've already been there, okay? April's already been there with going upside your head while you was drunk and having to have the cuffs put on a girl, okay? Yes, all right? But when you're a child and you like six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 11 years old and you're being verbally abused by a drunk, there's really not much you can do. Who's fighting off an adult at that age, at 11 years old and probably younger? Because she did say her mom was verbally abusive to her when she was getting drunk. She never said her sister was verbally abused and she might not have been because they are six years apart. So sometimes they will take it out on the one that's older. I'm not saying that's what's what happened, but Arby decided to stay with her mom while Loretta left and went with the father. So Arby probably wasn't treated like such. You know, it seems like Arby and her mom have a great relationship. There's one thing about family. Because they're family, you feel like they would be your family and they'd be the best of kin. And it's unfortunate that you cannot pick your family members because there are some family members that I really don't fuck with. And I'm pretty sure there are family members that some of y'all don't fuck with. Just because y'all related by blood does not mean y'all have to really be a family together. Sometimes the family will be the ones to stab you in the back, um, get over on you, scam you, use you, toxic to you, all kind of shit. You know what I'm saying? There's a there's a reason why it's called space and boundaries, all right? Now, here's the thing. I don't speak to my father. I don't speak to my father and I don't speak to my half-brother who is my father's child to another lady. I don't speak to them. I haven't spoken to them since my son passed away, all right? Since my son has passed away, I don't speak to them. And the reason for that being is when the whole situation occurred with my son and my father knew about it because of course I called and told him. He in return stated he wasn't coming because he, ha he had house taxes to pay for. Now his, ha his house taxes was only twice a year, every six months, and it was $200. Now if you didn't have the $200 to pay for your house taxes, I would have been glad to give it to you. Or if you didn't have money to get on a plane, I would have been more than glad to get your ticket here. You can also get a discounted ticket if you're needing to go to a funeral. All you need to do is show them the obituary or the statement or whatever. You show them some type of proof and you get a discounted flight from certain air flights regarding funeral services. Now he also felt like he didn't want to come out of pocket because he had his wife and nobody invited her. Nobody invited her. She barely even knew me nor my kids. But if you wanted to come, okay, I didn't invite her, but it wasn't that I didn't invite her, but he used the excuse as, um, well, Norma doesn't have the money to come either. Okay. Well, that's Norma's business, not mine. Okay, that has nothing to do with me. Instead of coming, they sent me this plant, not flowers, but a plant. And the day after the funeral, I'll never forget, okay? He called me, asked me, they didn't ask me how I was doing, how was the services. They asked me, did I get the plant and how was the plant, okay? Now, I think I had this plant in my house probably for like three, four days, okay? By the time he asked me about the goddamn plant, I took the plant and I threw it the fuck out in the middle of the street. And I told him and his wife via text message, they could take that plant and shove it up their old wrinkled asses. Now, it might not have been the right thing to say to my father, but let's just say this. My expectations of him was higher than that. I felt like because we finally became a, a family, he and I, and we bonded with one another, that he would do right by this time. He would be on, supportive to his daughter, who he was never supportive to. My mother was a single mother for mostly all of my life, up until since the age of two. All right. My mother was a single mother. My mother, my father didn't help my mother with a goddamn 
goddamn thing, okay? He's a big child. All he want to do is buy toy cars, toy trains, and shit like that, and then have kids with other women and take care of those children, but never took care of me. And I guess I can't say if it's because I live in another state, but it really doesn't matter, okay? It really doesn't matter because when I would speak with him and ask him for things, he would never send it to me. So I felt like as an adult and we became a little bit closer, you and I would have that bond and my expectations of you would follow, be followed through. This is the one reason why I say don't have expectations of people. Expectations of a person might not be their expectations of themselves, okay? And don't put expectations in a person because you can definitely be disappointed. So I try not to have expectations of people and I just go with the flow. And I learned that the hard way. Now, the reason why I don't speak to my half brother is because he and I was close like this, okay, since he was a kid. And I just felt like when my son passed away and you were close with him, you would have thought he would have called me up on the phone personally and spoke to me. Nah, he didn't even do that. He didn't even text me. He left comments on my Instagram feed. I felt like it was real impersonal. And at that point, I was like, you know, I'm not fucking with none of y'all. I'm not fucking with none of y'all. Y'all stay over there and I'm stay on this side where my real family is. So that's what I mean. Sorry about that. Um, that was Tati FaceTime me. So uh, what was I getting at? I don't even remember what I was saying. But I was saying, you know, expectations of people, why bother? It's unfortunate that that's your family. Sometimes family is the first ones to drag you down, put you down, stomp all over you, what have you. It's family. We cannot choose our family. Now, like I said, I don't fuck with a lot of people in my house, my family, and that's okay. There are times when I've had to block my eldest son, okay? And when I tell you he is my son, he was my firstborn, he is my firstborn, sometimes I have to block him and he's my family. And I say this, it doesn't make me feel good to have to block him, but the disrespect towards me and my daughters can be unrealistic at times. And it's like, are you serious? Are you really serious? You act like this because don't nobody want to do nothing for you? Don't nobody want to loan you money? Okay, I've already had that experience with you of loaning you money and you always claim you want to give it back and you don't, okay? Not to mention you go on social media when I don't do something you want or uh, my daughters don't do something you want and you blast us and talk shit about us on social media. So what type of person are you? All right. And then there's things that I really don't think that you um, should be doing, but you're doing it anyway. And now you have to see the hard way that it's karma coming back to you. Now, I have a whole different story to tell you about. And I'm going to tell you all this um, maybe like in a few weeks next month. I'm going to tell you this whole situation that he's done got himself into. OK, I'm going to be more than happy to explain to y'all. I'm going to be more than happy to tell you how I feel about it. But, you know, I'm going to come around real quick to those who don't do right. And that's just my thing. I don't feel sorry for people when they do wrong to family members, to their girlfriends or anything. I don't feel feel sorry for anybody who is negative. I don't care if you related to me by blood. I don't care if you related to me by marriage. Just because we related don't mean that we got to deal with one another. And it's unfortunate like that. Now, here's the thing, Loretta. What you can do for your sister is you can reach out to her via text message. If you have her number still, if he hasn't changed it, and let her know, hey, I would like to have lunch with you, my treat, so that we can talk. I really want to get to know you better. I really want to get to talk to you. I really want to tell you what things, how things have been. You know, reach out to her and let her know this. If she doesn't reach back to you and reciprocate, then Here's the thing. You tried. You gave it your best. You gave it your best shot. You tried. Now, the reason why I say for you to tell her is it's your treat. Because some people won't reciprocate. You invited me to lunch. So, therefore, are you paying? Let her know. Maybe that'll help her reciprocate more and meet up with you. I feel like meeting up in public sometimes will squash the beef and alleviate the drama and the loud talking or any type of argument. Now, I'm not saying when you go to lunch, if she initially reciprocates you, I'm not saying to go and bash your mama, your mother, in this conversation that you're having with her. But let her know your feelings and the reasons for why you did what you had to do. You know what I'm saying? Try to become a family with her again because you and her have one another. Y'all are the only siblings. Your mom's not going to be here forever. And so you guys want to bond with one another. And I just really don't think that it's cool. There's always two sides, sometimes three sides to the story, depending on how many people are involved. So we got three people involved in this. So there's three sides to the story. And it seems like Loretta's sister, Aubrey, really don't have a story. She's just going off of what she's hearing from the mother because she's coming back to Loretta. Like, you know, basically like you, you left us, you switched sides, like what a ride. You know what I'm saying? Shit like that. But I really think it's beneficial for you to reach out to her and just let her know, you know, I really want to get to know you better and I would love for us to have a sit down at lunch or dinner and in my treat I just really want to explain some things to you and if she don't reciprocate and she don't return it listen at least you know in your heart that you tried and you didn't leave it empty you tried to fill her cup up but she didn't want to receive it and sometimes people don't want to receive it just because they don't and that's okay too but here's my thing make sure you try with her you don't have to continue this negative thing with your family because your mom you can reach out to her now for the other family members like your aunts and stuff you know what sometimes people just be stuck 
stuck in their ways and you just got to leave them alone. You ain't even got to reach out to them. You ain't even got to say nothing. Sometimes it's best just leaving shit the fuck alone and not saying anything for that matter. Now, I, you might feel that way about your sister too, but y'all are siblings and y'all are the ones that got to be close. It's great when you have a sister that you can talk to, hang out with, you know, same thing. I have a sister. She and I, we really don't speak that much. She doesn't have children. She be in her own world with her boyfriend and that's fine. You know, I'm the one that mostly always reaches out to her. And yeah, it does bother me at times. It bothers me a lot because it's like, girl, I helped raise you. No, we are 13 years apart. I did help raise you. And I just feel like you don't check on me. You don't check on your nieces, your nephews, your great nephews, your great niece. You don't do any of that. And it's unfortunate that I have to be the one to reach out to them all the time. But I just feel like, you know what? Sometimes you can't change a person. Same thing with my mom. I have to be the one to reach out to her all the time, it seems like. And yeah, that bothers me a lot because it's like, do y'all even give a fuck about me? Do y'all care about me and how I'm doing? But I still have to realize that some people you're not going to change. Your expectations of a person may exceed that person. So yeah, they don't reach out to me, but I'm still going to reach out to them to see how they're doing. And if that's how they want to live their life, that's fine. That's on them. But for me, I can't sleep well not knowing how my family is. So sometimes we got to bend over a little bit just to appease those. And I'm not saying you got to do a whole flip around and kiss nobody's ass, but I will say this. As for your aunt, leave it alone because she older. She was drunk. She may not even remember what the fuck happened. And you, you don't have to associate yourself with her, but it would be nice to see you associate yourself with your sister. Now, as for your mother, it would be great if you guys could get along too. And maybe one day after you and your sister have rekindled your bond, maybe you and your mother can too. You know, you got your sister as the middleman and she reciprocates and she receives your message. And she receives your message, your sister, then she can kind of be the middleman between you and your mother and hopefully things work out. But honey, don't feel bad if you don't want to associate yourself with some of your family members. You ain't the only one, girl. That's this worldwide, baby, okay? And because you you're, you're teaching your children to be a better person, this is family, I get that because I teach my kids the same thing. We are family. But it's also about respect. You have to respect your family. Don't feel because you're family that you don't have to respect them because respect goes around. And like I said, karma will come back and bite your ass real quick before you even know it. And that's just how I feel about my son's actions. But you know, it is what it is. You know, like I said, family can sometimes hurt you and sometimes they can lift you up and sometimes they can kick your ass down. You got to realize just because we, we blood related or we related some type of way, don't mean I got to deal with your ass. There are cousins that I have that I don't even speak to. Okay. And that's okay. My one cousin, Keisha, I don't, I don't fuck with her. We didn't really grow up together like that. You know, that's my cousin. I would see her every now and then. But my cousin, Kenya, the one who lived on the 10th floor and I lived on the first floor, we grew up together. She's a few years older than me, but we are with Thicket and Thieves, okay? Now, sometimes she and I may have like, a, like we might lash at, out at one another or we may not mesh together, but we always find our way back to one another. We always can apologize to one another, okay? So she and I are really close. And when Keisha would speak to me on the phone every now and then, she would talk about Kenya. And when I say talk about her, I don't mean it in a good way, okay? But you would turn around and go talk to Kenya. Like, we're not about to do that. And I had to put her on blast one day while I had Kenya on the phone. I had to put her on blast one day. Because you're not going to sit here and talk shit about my motherfucking cousin, me and her, because we ace boom coons, and then turn around and be fake to her. We're not doing that fake shit over here, okay? I allowed you to do it. I allowed you to go through it. But now I'm cutting it. We're going to stop this shit. I figured maybe once or twice you would stop, but you didn't. And I'm not really with the fake shit. And you're not about to talk about my cousin who I feel like is my sister, okay? She's my sister. Now, as for aunts, I've had an aunt like that, Kenya's mother. She and my mom were real close. And Kenya's mother is actually my mom's cousin. And she's my cousin. But she's my mom's age. And out of respect, I will call her Aunt Rhoda. Even though she was my cousin, I would out of respect call her Aunt Rhoda. She used to do the same shit to me. Be going off of me when my mother would tell her my business or what I got in trouble for. Come come walk in the apartment because my mom gave her a set of keys. Sometimes I couldn't stand Aunt Rhoda, okay? Sometimes I couldn't stand her, but I got blessed to that because I miss her dearly. She is a shit talker. She was a good shit talker. But, you know, we all have those family members and some of them we just got to stay the fuck away from. I do hope one day that me and my father can rekindle our relationship. But for right now, I just feel like it's best for me to just keep my distance from him and my brother. I just really felt like some of the things that they did was not needed and uncalled for, you know, but my expectations was exceeded what he was. And that's OK. You know, I should have realized from then, like, he was never there for you, girl. So what makes you think he's going to be there for you now? All he care about is that damn wife of his. Girl, it is what it is. OK, but leave Loretta your information, like, not your information, but leave Loretta, leave Loretta your comments below. What would you do in a situation? Do you have a situation like this regarding family members? You know, I think we all be having like them dysfunctional family members, like straight up. I really feel like 
all of us have somebody in our family that's dysfunctional. Look, my mother's brother, my mother's biological brother, because there was only two of them, he's dysfunctional as fuck. He like, what, 70, 73, 74 now? Still a drunk, still a fucking drunk. Live in a room, rents a room in New York, and be calling my mother up, trying to get her to buy him all types of things um, as an adult, but treated her like shit as a kid growing up, okay? He older than my mother. And um, I had to put a stop to that because you're not going to use my mama. We're not going to use my mama. When my mother's mom died, my mom was 11 years old when my mom's mom died. And um, they, of course, they still had their father. And my uncle's been a drunk since the age of, I think, like either 14 or 15, my mother would tell me because their father would allow him to have parties in the apartment, get drunk. And so from that, from there, he would just treat my mom like, like shit. He'd let her get bullied in school, get picked on. And he was never really a good brother. So when you get an adult age, you're not about to use my mother and ask her for shit. I surely didn't nip that shit in the butt. He don't even call her no more. Ask her for a goddamn thing. And that's how it should be, okay? Family can be toxic because sometimes you got to let the ass go. Never feel bad about letting somebody go that's not helping you rise up, but there's nothing but doing nothing but tearing you down. Never feel bad for letting anybody go that's doing nothing but tearing you down and hurting your motherfucking feelings, okay? And on that note, stay diva and divalicious. Leave your comments below. I will see y'all in the next video. I love y'all all. Have a great day, evening, weekend, whenever you're watching this. I'll see y'all in the next video.